Hi Alexandre, here's a little toy exploring the use of WebRTC to create server client architectures. So the trick I'll be using is that each of the clients will be aware of one shared channel. So they will know the ID of one channel and this channel is going to work like a server. So let's call it uh, some server. Oh, by the way, you get this toy in Google code at this address. Okay, let's reload it so you believe me. So some server, the name is, is of no consequence. And now we have a link where the clients can be informed about the, this server. So let's open a new tab. Let's move it to the side. In this little exercise, I'll be using tabs of the same server. Uh, it, it works also between machines. I've only tried it in Google Chrome. I imagine it might work in Firefox. They're supposed to support WebRTC as well. And I'm using PeerJS as a signaling server. So here's one client. Here's another client. Now each client needs an ID. Let's start with this one. Let's call it AA. DB. And notice as I signal the, the uh, identity server, the shared channel becomes aware of these channels, of the client channels. DB. CC. Now DB gets lonely. And you are on home. You close to the relay channel, who sends it to all the other channels. I do have sometimes problems. I'm not sure if it's the API or the way I wrote the code. I do sometimes have problems which force me to create uh, additional channels. So I'm going to actually reload this one, which is a good chance for you to see that the relay server will be aware of the disappearance of CC. And I'm going to create DD. Let's give it a try. No, DD. All right. So DD is going to tell everybody that it does exist. DD is here. So everybody knows about DD. Now let's say AA decides to talk to DD directly. So if this architecture works well, the server will now only send it to the, the DD client. And this is something where, where WebRTC has some really interesting features because the whole security model is designed to enforce this sort of granularity. This, so the issues of authorization and identification are greatly simplified because of this. Okay, I am here. So only DD got it. DB is still not aware that DD exists. So I can answer back. Nice seeing you. And it is Tony going back and forth. Now one of these channels, let's say BB doesn't know who's out there or doesn't want to talk to DD and looks for ZZ. ZZ there. Now ZZ doesn't exist. So for a while, this little button will stay there. And there it is. So the channel failed to open and this is recognized. Now, if you want to have a look at the code, of course, you can just open the browser. I just decoupled the development tools, developer tools. Let's pop them back. There it is. And you'll find out that this requires very little code. There it is. It's only around 100 and, and some lines. Anyway, have a look and let me know if you find this interesting. I'm not completely aware of what sort of scalability issues would we get into as more and more clients try to use the same servers, but the, the uh, lag time is, is quite interesting. All right, I'm gonna stop here. Talk to you soon, bye-bye.